equipped to challenge the outcome in our state and federal courts, which have an appropriate and constitutional role in resolving election claims. But what he did thereafter had no precedent in our history. He rejected the court's rulings in dozens of cases, including the rulings of judges President Trump himself appointed. He rejected what his own Department of Justice officials told him over and over again, that they found no evidence of widespread fraud sufficient to overcome the election results. He rejected the conclusions of both the Department of Justice and the intelligence community when they told him that the Dominion voting machines had not secretly changed the outcome of the election. President Trump had no factual or constitutional basis for his claims, and the lawyers he found who would carry his fraud claims forward have paid the consequences. Rudy Giuliani's license to practice law has been suspended, and Sidney Powell has been sanctioned by a federal judge. But Donald Trump persisted attempting through every manner he could imagine to try to change the outcome. And we all saw what happened. The people who attacked this building told us, continue to tell us, on video, on social media, and now before the federal courts, exactly what motivated them. They believed what Donald Trump said, that the election was stolen and that they needed to take action. The Select Committee has critical work to do to get all of the details, and today we are here to address one witness, Steve Bannon. I urge you all to watch what Steve Bannon said on his podcast on January 5th. The chairman just quoted parts of it, and it is shocking. He said, all hell is going to break loose tomorrow. We are coming in right over the target. This is the point of attack we have always wanted. He said all hell would break loose on January 6th, and he was right. Ask the over 140 Capitol Police officers who fought for hours and were injured, and there is no doubt that Steve Bannon knows far more than he says on that video. The American people deserve to know what happened. They deserve to hear him answer these questions. Mr. Bannon has written to us suggesting that he's relying on the fact that President Trump wishes to assert executive privilege for his communications with Bannon regarding the planning for January 6th. We do not believe any such privilege claims are appropriate. And even if such privilege existed, it is still not absolute or unqualified. We are confident that we will prevail on these privilege issues. But there is a more important and more fundamental point here. The vast majority of what we need from Mr. Bannon is not even conceivably subject to an executive privilege claim. Mr. Bannon is using privilege as a pretext for not appearing at all and for producing absolutely no documents of any kind. That puts this institution's authority at significant risk, not just here and now, but in all future investigations. Criminal contempt is the appropriate response in these circumstances. At this moment, it is not just the institution of Congress's authority that is at stake. The potential harm to the foundation of our republic is far more significant. In the past week, President Trump has openly urged millions of Republican voters not to vote in 2022 or 2024. He's urging them to abandon our democratic system based on what every one of us knows are false claims about systemic fraud and Dominion voting machines. Let me address my Republican colleagues specifically. I've heard from a number of my colleagues in the last several days who say they, quote, just don't want this target on their back. They're just trying to keep their heads down. They don't want to anger Kevin McCarthy, the minority leader, who has been especially active in attempting to block the investigation of events of January 6th, despite the fact that he clearly called for such a commission the week after the attack. 
I ask each one of you to step back from the brink. I urge you to do what you know is right, to think of the long arc of history. We are told that it bends towards justice, but it does so only because of the actions of men and women in positions of public trust. In many nations, democracy has failed because those with authority would not act to protect it because they sat in silence. History will judge those of us in positions of public trust. Remember that as you cast your votes, as you think about how you will answer when history asks, what did you do when Congress was attacked, when a mob provoked by a president tried to use violence to stop us from carrying out our constitutional duty to count electoral votes, when a mob provoked by a president tried to overturn the results of an election? Will you be able to say you did everything possible to ensure Americans got the truth about those events? Or did you look away? Did you make partisan excuses and accept the unacceptable? This contempt citation is crucial to our investigation. Witnesses cannot simply ignore congressional subpoenas when they prefer not to attend. We must do everything possible to understand that dark day in our history and to ensure through potential legislative and other actions that such a thing never happens again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.